Welcome back to Because You Asked. I'm Barry Nussbaum. Today, we're talking about incredible news out of the United States in the aftermath of the memories as we recall 9-11. President Trump has made a dramatic change in American policy uh, vis-a-vis the Palestinians. I'm joined today by my partner at American Truth Project, our national director, Annie Ina Cyrus. Welcome back, Annie. Oh, always a pleasure to be here with you. So today you're the host and you get to ask me some questions. It's all yours, babe. Take it away. Perfect. Um, actually, before I get started, thank you for giving me the privilege to ask questions. I always feel jealous of those who get to ask questions and you give them such amazing detail and clear answers. So thanks for giving me that chance. But as you said, as we remember September 11, 2001, where the horrific terror attacks um, orchestrated by back then one of the most powerful and famous uh, leaders of Islamic movement, Osama bin Laden, was um, delivered and killed thousands of Americans here. Um, it is sad, sad to know that 17 years later, Barry, it is not even allowed or accepted for us to label those attacks Islamic. And the fact that back in 2001, when the um, Twin Towers were going down and Americans were losing their lives, or some of their lives were destroyed forever, Muslim Palestinians were dancing on the streets and handing out sweets and celebrating such horrific day in the history of human society. Now, I guess the first question I have for you is, is that a still the same attitude Palestinians have toward us? Yeah, it's, it's a despicable, almost inhumane practice to teach your children the joy of death of others. The um, Arabic tradition of giving candy and small presents to the children on great days is perpetrated on a weekly basis in both the Gaza Strip and the West Bank. Um, it started on a big scale, the likes of which the West had never seen on 9-11, where there was dancing in the streets and candy and presents and celebration and AK-47 shot into the air to celebrate mass death of Americans by Islamic terror um, perpetrated by Al-Qaeda. Um, and since then, it has become regular uh, on the streets of both areas. When there's a suicide bombing, a terror attack, an attempted murder of Americans or Israelis or visitors to the Holy Land, uh, whether it's successful or not, it's celebrated. Uh, it's celebrated in the schools, it's celebrated in the streets, and it doesn't get any press in the United States. It's horrific that that's what they teach their children every day celebrate death and here's a present just to remind you young boy or girl that this is what our society is all about exactly and um as you mentioned if you don't mind me inserting one of my memories here i remember when i started going to school the very first day as they lined us up in the backyard of a school to introduce us to our new educational system the first thing we were taught was to learn to repeat after the dean of our school the sentences that says death to Israel and death to America. From very first day of a school, that was the first thing they tried to brainwash people like me with. So exactly, it has been a tradition. And unfortunately, I was one of the millions, but most of kids will follow and learn and end up blowing themselves up um, to kill Israelis or Americans, if they can do both, even better. Now, here's a question. President Trump uh, announced that if Palestinians are not uh, willing to talk peace instead of terror, uh, United States will cut their funding. My question for you, being an expert when it comes to Israel and Palestinian issues going on, has this ever happened before? It is so extraordinary. The answer is a profound 50 foot no. It has never happened before. The words 
uh, Annie have been used before by various American presidents going back, probably starting most profoundly with President Clinton. But each time a president in the United States made a speech about the Palestinians and the Israelis have to talk, American presidents, Republican and Democrat, did nothing virtually uh, each presidency since when the Palestinians literally walked away time after time after time after time. I mean, you can go back to Jimmy Carter, Bill Clinton, um, George Bush, Barack Obama. Nobody did anything until now. The big difference is Trump said, you have to be at the peace table or else he got the big middle finger from Mahmoud Abbas. And guess what? There have been a lot of what else's in the last few months. It's extraordinary to see the change in American foreign policy uh, against the government that promotes terror and will not come to the peace table. Exactly. And um, here, here, here's the thing. For years, and I mean years, um, Palestinians, uh, as you just mentioned, you know, the whole giving him a sweet, a gift to celebrate a death of a fellow human it gets worse because for many years, Palestinians are actually getting rich, financially rich, for specifically targeting Israelis and killing them. Every year, about $300 million is being spent on rewarding Palestinian families, which I might add, part of that money is coming from Islamic Republic of Iran's budget, and the regime of Iran is paying them to lose their fathers or sons or husbands to jihad and killing Israelis. And we don't hear about it anywhere. It's not highlighted on any of the news channel, mainstream media to smaller medias. Is this a new thing that's happening? And why is it not all over the news, Barry? You know, I can't figure it out, Annie. Um, not only is Iran paying um, the Palestinian Authority to promote and uh, fund a uh, mass killings and suicide bombings and stabbings and uh, so on. But the United States has been funding it and Europe has been funding it, specifically the EU, uh, commonly called the pay for slay program. The largest portion of the Palestinian Authority budget goes to pay either Palestinians who have attempted to kill Israelis or Westerners survived and got sentenced to jail in Israel. They make a very good living. Actually, they get paid more than any other major job in the Palestinian Authority, more than a doctor, more than a lawyer, more than an engineer, and more than most governmental officials. In other words, they sit in very nice Israeli jails, they get to recreate, they hang out with their friends, and they make a fortune paid to their families. The big money comes if they die in carrying out an attack. For example, each person that went to the fence, that shot through the fence at Israelis that got killed in Gaza, their families get rich. It's been going on now for decades, and Mahmoud Abbas told President Trump to his face he would end it, went back to uh, Ramallah and announced there's not a chance he will ever end it. In fact, he said that program, they call it the Martyr Fund, would be eliminated over his dead body. And sadly and profoundly, the West ignores this. They continue to dump money to these people whose biggest, bu biggest budgetary expense is murder and promotion of murder and terror. It's a big secret that everybody knows about and nobody wants to talk about. I consider it despicable. Yeah, I hear you, Barry. Sometimes it does get confusing, but um, I I personally appreciate you answering my questions because a lot of them just doesn't make sense, and it's good to have you here to answer them. Thank you. Of course, and thank you, our viewers, for joining us on Because You Asked. You can always write to either me or Annie at truth at americantruthproject.org. We do our best to get back to your questions. Please go to our website, americantruthproject.org, where you can sign up to be on our mailing list so you never miss an important episode or article. We look forward to answering your questions. We are here for you.
You can handle the truth, and we are here to bring it to you. I'm Barry Newsbaum.